What's up? This is Wes with Fantasy Smack Talk, week seven in the fantasy football season. Uh, Going to bring you my top pivot picks, top differentiation plays uh, for this week's FanDuel Sunday Million Tournament. Before I do, just want to tell y'all about fanfootball.ninja, F-A-N football.ninja. Uh, it's a pretty cool tool. allows you to take every team that you have, regardless of the site, ESPN, Yahoo, um, CBS, wherever, put them into this one platform. Uh, track all your waiver wires, all your league transactions, and follow all your matchups in one place on Sunday and Monday nights. So check that out, fanfootball.ninja. All right, going to get right into week seven. Uh, pivot picks, differentiation plays. My top quarterback this week is Marcus Mariota. Uh, really excited about Mariota this week at 8,200 against the Browns. Um, coming off a pretty good performance against the Colts on Monday night, but clearly wasn't at 100%. So... Um, Probably Mariota would be a chalk play this week if there wasn't um, a lot of shootouts projected in the NFL. Cleveland and Tennessee, I believe, is at 46.5, uh, but they're six games higher than that, so um, a lot of shootouts projected by Vegas uh, should prop up guys like Brady, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, and keep Mariota's ownership uh, somewhere between 7 and 9%. So uh, definitely a buy opportunity, particularly with the matchup that Mariota gets in Cleveland. Browns have been a little bit better defensively at home this year than they have been on the road, uh, but they're still a team that's dead last in the NFL in opponent passer rating, uh, despite the fact that they're middle of the road um, in terms of points per game allowed on FanDuel. So um, I really think people are going to be scared away by Mariota's injury still, at least through this week. Um, those questions are just going to linger until he proves that he can be as mobile as he's shown in the past. A lot of people feel like his fantasy value is really reliant on his legs. Um, to a large extent, that's true, but Mariota did have his first 300-yard passing game last week uh, since week nine or week eight of last year. So definitely capable of being a good quarterback in this league, not just fantasy-wise, whether or not he can run. So I think he's out to prove that, and I think he'll be able to run this week. So um, you're looking at a guy probably 8.5% owned, and if he can exceed 20 points on FanDuel with that $8,200 price tag, I uh, really think he's a hugely valuable option in the FanDuel Sunday Million. All right, running back, C.J. Anderson, guy I've chosen before, a uh, guy having a few teams. He's been hugely inconsistent, probably one of the most frustrating players in fantasy football going into last week, and that was before the Browns decided to lose to the 0-5 Giants. So uh, that's why I don't bet on games. Um, but I do think that that dud it was 17 yards, I believe, on nine carries that Anderson put up against the Giants on Sunday night makes him a great play this week, uh, especially because the Broncos are traveling to Los Angeles to take on the Chargers, who have been top two or three or arguably the single worst run defense in the NFL this year, uh, giving up about five yards per carry to opposing running backs and are also surrendering the most fantasy points on FanDuel to running backs. So... Um, good buy low option again I, I do think that CJ Anderson's recent struggles or inconsistencies are just going to make people turn elsewhere but the Broncos can't turn elsewhere in games they've won this year um, three games the Broncos have won CJ's averaging about 24 touches and almost 120 total yards his numbers are atrocious in games that the Broncos have lost not getting enough touches obviously some of that is reliant on game flow um, but the Broncos need a win this week. Keep pace with the Chiefs, who, depending on Thursday's outcome, will either be 5-2 and two or more likely 6-1 and one, uh, against this Chargers team that, again, is just pathetic against the run. The Broncos have no excuse to not feed him and feed him often. All right, wide receiver. Going back to Brandon Cooks this week. Cooks was uh, my pick on this video in week six, and he was 5.2% owned. And he had 12.3 points on FanDuel, which isn't going to win anybody a tournament or probably make anyone money, but that came without a touchdown. So uh, Cooks has gone from being kind of inconsistent to being uh, more reliable in my eyes over the last couple weeks. He's had at least eight targets between eight and nine just over the last two weeks. So finally starting to mesh with Tom Brady, uh, that player that people expected him to be in training camp, seems to be materializing. So... Um, and even throughout the season, he has six targets in all but one game um, for the Patriots. So Tom Brady's going to keep spreading the ball around. Obviously, Hogan, Amendola, Cooks, Gronk, and then guys like James White out of the backfield. Um, but there's enough opportunity to go around. 
this uh, Super Bowl matchup, or Super Bowl rematch, I should say, on Sunday night. Vegas is projecting at 54, uh, which is the highest over-under I've seen, I think, all year. So, again, should be plenty of love to go around, and all Cooks needs to do is turn one of those targets into a touchdown. Could get up close to uh, 20 points on FanDuel, and he still will be single-digit uh, single owned uh, in this tournament. So that would make him hugely valuable, again, at just 7,800. All right. Last pick, really excited about Kyle Rudolph this week at tight end. Kyle Rudolph is 5,400 against the Ravens. Uh, kind of a tough situation in Minnesota as Sam Bradford continues to do what Sam Bradford does, and that's not play in football games that he's pay, uh, paid to play in. But Kyle Rudolph has been the biggest beneficiary uh, out of the wide receivers there. Obviously, McKinnon has performed well uh, also, but Thielen and Diggs, when healthy regardless, are just struggling while Kyle Rudolph is reaping all the benefits. Case Keenum um, clearly <clears throat> has a good relationship with Rudolph, targeted him nine times in each of the past two weeks, and Keenum was uh, you know, the guy prominently behind center despite the few drives that Bradford played in before he got hurt again last week. So Bradford still isn't going to play. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater's not back yet. Keenum's still the guy, and, and that means Rudolph should still be the guy you're looking at in this tournament and in a lot of... Um, DFS and season-long uh, leagues. Against the Ravens, even better matchup for Kyle Rudolph. Mercedes Lewis hung three touchdowns on this Ravens team. Each of, each of Chicago's tight ends uh, scored last week. So um, Ravens have a good defense, but against the tight end, they are not defending it. And Rudolph is going to be the best tight end they've seen all year. So I really love that pick this week. Again, 5,400 against the Ravens. Even though he's not going to win a tournament for anyone, uh, just really valuable play and a really good option in the Sunday Million Tournament. All right, guys, thanks for checking it out this week. Um, check out fantasysmacktalk.com for more stories, more videos, and then follow us on Twitter at Fantasy Advice. We'll get all your questions uh, about your lineups answered by game time on Sunday, any trade questions, kind of long-term strategy, any sport, hit us up, and we'll get back with you as quickly as we can, and if we don't, um, you can shame us publicly. So check it out at Fantasy Advice on Twitter. And we'll be back next week for the pivot picks of week eight.